In this video, I'm going to count down through the top 10 pieces of gear that help me to stream and make content. I'm going to talk about how much each one costs. I'm going to talk about what I use it for and what the kind of pros and cons of each thing are. Now, I've ranked them from the least useful or my least favorite to either the most useful or my most favorite, sort of like from the worst to best. And like I said, I'm going to be completely honest through all of this. Some of this stuff is things that have been given to me. Some of these are things that I've bought, but I'm going to give you my 100% honest opinions. None of this is like sponsored by any of the companies mentioned today. So at number 10, my least favorite thing that I own that I have to interact with every day is my Go XLR Mini by TC Helicon. So for anyone who doesn't know what this is, this is basically a little USB mixer. It's something where you can plug an XLR microphone into it. You can plug an audio in and audio out with like three and a half millimeter jacks into it. It also has a USB connection to one PC. And then you can use it to sort of control lots of different audio channels and choose like how to route them through. There are other ways around it. So you can use a piece of software that's free called Voice Meter Banana. The problem with that is that it's a little bit glitchy. It sometimes crashes a little bit and it's running on your PC, on your gaming PC. So it's hard to control anything while you're playing a game and while you're streaming or anything. Whereas the Go XLR has like different sliders on it. You can choose what each slider does. So I can very easily increase the like volume of my microphone or increase the volume of Discord to the stream. Or I can lower the game sound, stuff like that. I can mute things. There's lots of cool features like that. But I kind of hate this thing. The first problem is that it's an analog thing. Like when I bought one for the first time, I sent it back almost immediately. Because as soon as I plugged it in, I was like, oh my God, there's all this hissing and crackling and stuff. There's all this power interference. And it was driving me wild. I went to their support and they were like, oh yeah, just buy a load of ground, news, ground loop isolators and put them on everything. And they cost like five pounds and they're just little things that you attach to the cables. Um, I did that and it sort of like reduced some of it, but it didn't completely go away. And people were just like, oh, well, you know, it's just like, that's the power in your house. It's like, okay, great. So I've just got to deal with all of this noise. So I just sent it back because I was fed up with it. I ended up buying one again because I really got frustrated with not being able to control all of these things separately, particularly being able to do the different recordings and streams and stuff like that. So I got one again and I've managed to get it to a setup that nearly works, but the software still constantly gets in the way. The software for me is constantly crashing. It doesn't recognize it sometimes the USB device. It will crash in the middle of the stream. Sometimes it will suddenly decide to switch audio outputs so suddenly it'll start coming out of my speakers rather than like going to the stream where it's meant to go it's an absolute nightmare like i really really hate this thing and i would love to have like an all digital solution i know beacon have the mix create which i would love to be able to get if i could afford it and if they shipped them to the uk in a nice easy way or i think elgato have the um xlr type thing was it called oh, i don't can't remember what that's called like the xlr wave or something like that where you can plug an xlr mic in then use the wave software which i think is a lot better I might get one of those things at some point when I, can, when I can afford it. But for now, I'm using the Go XLR. It costs £133 right now, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that expensive for what it does. But do be aware that if you want to buy a Go XLR Mini, you are going to have loads of different headaches to do with trying to make sure the sound quality is really, really good and you don't have all of those hisses and crackles and then trying to make sure the software is stable enough to do the things that you want to do. Like, God help you if you also want to mess with different profiles and things like that because the number of times it forgets stuff is super irritating right from now on everything's pretty positive i like all of my other stuff it's just to go xlr that winds me up so the next thing are my foot pedals so these are made by a company called ikigo although i think there's like a million different companies that make the exact same pedals and it's worth saying that elgato have brought out some pedals now that look like they're higher quality and the software will be easier to use and stuff like that but these kind of do the job this was something that was recommended to me by mimosa check out mimosa streams on twitch if you haven't already he's absolutely awesome and basically the foot pedals aren't used for like cheats and stuff like that. Like I know loads of people say like, oh my God, he's using foot pedals, must be for cheats. I literally use them for Discord. So I use the right foot pedal, because there's two pedals on this. I use the right foot pedal just to mute myself to Discord. So say if I want to talk to stream, you know, someone just did a big donation or something, but I'm playing with like Jack Frags or someone and I don't want to mess up their stream. I can just hold that foot pedal in Discord, it's set up as a hotkey, so it like mutes me while I hold it, and then I can talk to stream without having to annoy everyone on Discord. Then I also have my left button set to mute and deafen, which means say if there's like a cutscene at the end of like an Easter egg in Call of Duty, especially in Zombies or something like that, and I don't want the recording to be messed up by like people talking in the background or for the stream to be annoyed by people talking in the background, or if I'm just playing with someone and I want to mute them for whatever reason for a bit, I can just tap that foot pedal and instantly mute everything on the Discord. So then 
I don't have that sound coming through at all. That's super useful. It means I don't have to tell people to shut up on Discord when there's a cutscene or something. I found these super helpful and they're not that expensive. The foot pedals I've got with the two foot pedals are 40 quid. Um, like I said, you know, build quality and everything is absolutely fine, but you can get a nicer looking set from Elgato if you want. And I think that's got three pedals instead of two. So you definitely can get different ones. You can get some that just have one pedal if you think you only need one of those features or something. But I think the foot pedal is really, really useful. To be honest, I don't use it as much as I should. I probably should mute myself more. Sometimes I forget about them a little bit, probably because I can't see them. But when I do need them, they're absolutely invaluable. At number eight, we have my microphone. Now, this is something that I've sort of gone back and forward about how high to put up the list because this microphone is absolutely fine. I use an AT2020, which is an XLR microphone. XLR means it uses this big beefy cable. It uses analog audio rather than using something like USB. And it's something that really I just got an XLR mic because then you can plug it into the Go XLR. That's why it's called the Go XLR. And in theory, you know, you get better audio quality and everything. I would say I have also had a Blue Yeti and a Elgato Wave 1 mic. They're both absolutely fine. And to be honest, I think the difference between this microphone and those microphones for just sort of talking over gameplay isn't that great. That being said, a lot of those USB mics are very expensive. And this thing, the AT2020, you can buy it right now for £76, which isn't that much for a sort of decent microphone. Um, I know there are much better ones. You know, you can get a Shure mic or something like that. And you can spend a huge amount more money but it's always worth thinking about like what are you spending that money on do you need that audio quality increase have you listened to your videos or your streams and thought oh god i don't sound good enough i need that extra improvement have people in your channel said that like oh your mic doesn't sound very good or anything i'm willing to bet they probably haven't and you probably haven't noticed anything and if you got one of those better microphones if you really really focused you might be able to hear the difference but it's definitely not going to be worth paying like four or five times as much for it so the AT2020, perfectly good XLR microphone. So the next piece of my setup, and at number seven, is something that I don't use all of the time, but that is an Elgato green screen. So all of you, I'm sure, will know what a green screen's for. You just put it up, it makes a big green flat color, and then you can set up what's called a chroma key in OBS or whatever software you're using to stream, and it will replace any of that color with whatever you want. So whether that's your gameplay, if you just want to make sure you're not filling up too much of the screen, so you just have yourself on the screen and a, the gameplay behind you, or you can put some picture behind you if you want to change your background, or you can mess around and do silly effects like you know i've got a green t-shirt that's the same color so it looks like my head's floating and stuff you can do whatever you want the most useful thing i found for it was when i first started streaming i didn't really have a space set up in my house for streaming and it's a bit difficult to sort of clear a big background or to try and organize your furniture to look good for stream and also not get in the way of other people like the room that i'm in now is just kind of the room we use to dry washing in so i didn't want sort of like my wife having to worry about coming in the background of the stream all the time or having my washing up behind me so i could use the green screen to put it in front of that and just cover up everything now one of the brilliant things about this green screen is it's super easy to store so it's actually behind me right now and i'll show you just how easy it is to set up so there we go that's how quickly you can set this thing up you just like pull it up it's got some sort of clever spring system in the back there where it just kind of locks into position and there you have a green screen now obviously you can see here that this isn't like filling up all of the space on my camera that's just because my camera i've got set quite far back but obviously you can play with the camera you can move the green screen a lot closer to make sure it fills up the whole frame and then when you're done with it when you don't want to use it anymore just there we go it's away and the whole thing's done so that thing is super useful if you want a green screen heartily recommend the elgato green screen it's a super good one at number six, we have something that I think a lot of streamers forget about when they first get started, and that is lighting. So lots of people spend loads of money on a camera thinking like they want to have really good sort of like webcam quality, and then it still looks bad when they buy an expensive camera, and that's because their lighting is bad. If you've got a cheap webcam, you can make it look really good with the right lighting, but if you've got really bad lighting, most expensive camera in the world is still going to look pretty terrible. So I have a load of Hue lights behind me. I've got like a Hue bulb on my left on a lampshade that I got from Ikea. I've got some play bars behind me that cost like 120 quid for the pair and then i've got a gradient strip over there all of those were things i just had dotted around the house previously because i kind of liked the idea of having lighting that you could change color and then i just sort of 
brought them all here so I could control the background. Some of the nice things I can do with this is a program called Lumia Stream. Um, I just used a free version of it and I can set it up so like if someone follows me on Twitch, I can sort of make it pulse a little bit, kind of pinkish. I can make it so if someone like raids the channel, I can press a button, it changes all the colors quickly. And if I just want to change the mood of it, so say like if I'm playing something like Blood Hunt and I want it to be sort of red in the background because it's, you know, vampire type thing, I can just change that on the software really easy. Don't have to get up and move anything around. I also have a key light. It's just one that Twitch sent me for free when I was a partner. I looked it up on Amazon. It's like £10 or something. It's just a literally a ring that goes bright white or you can make it kind of yellowy if you want a different color temperature. All of those things are super useful and make you kind of pop a little bit. The key light's useful to make you stand out from the background. If you're going to start streaming and you're looking at this video to try and get gear, the main thing I'd get is just a cheap key light. Just get something cheap that can be bright, that can be sort of behind the camera looking at you, so then you stand out a little bit from your background. That's super useful. And if you can get any kind of colored lighting, you can get that. You don't need to get Philips Hue ones, you can get like any brand just to make your background look a different color. It's super fun to play with and it lets you sort of change things up very, very easily. So at number five, we have something that I've been using for an incredibly long time and I'm actually using it in a slightly different way now because I've just replaced it yesterday with something and I'll talk about that thing later in the video. But this is my Elgato USB capture card. So it's called the HD60 S Plus. It's something I've been using for a very long time. It will basically you put whatever you want to capture. So whether it's your PC, whether it's a console, whatever, into the input of it, just using HDMI. And then you have a USB that goes to your stream PC. And then it just works like a webcam or anything like that. You just select it in OBS as a video capture device and it shows up i personally don't even use the elgato software or anything like that i just use it through obs and it works absolutely fine super simple it also has a pass through so if you're putting console in there then you can put the output to your screen if you're recording pc i personally don't use the pass through just because i sort of just split the signal so i have like display port for my signal to my monitor making sure that i can use everything that i can use through display port so like g-sync and stuff like that and then I can also set, duplicate that signal over HDMI that goes to the capture card. And that's worked absolutely fine for me. There's a few little annoying things of it, like sometimes if some if a um, display input changes resolution or something, sometimes it can cause the capture card to crash. So you just need to restart it. It's pretty easy. I don't really like the way it deals with audio sometimes. So I have like a different solution for audio through the GoXLR, but you definitely can do audio. And there's even like a way to put in like your headset and stuff into it. There are ways around that, but you probably need the Elgato software software to make the most of that side of it it's a really solid capture card it's actually just been replaced by the hd60x which i think deals with hdr and stuff like that a bit better for the same price it's about 190 quid it's quite pricey but capture cards are quite pricey and you know if you're streaming they're probably one of the more important things you want to do unless you want to try streaming directly from the consoles or something like that or if you've got a one pc streaming setup obviously you probably don't need a capture card then either but for what it is i think it's really good i've used a couple of other ones like the razor rips or um, I found this the easiest to use, the most straightforward and the most reliable. And that counts for a lot when you're streaming. At number four, we have my camera. And this is probably the place where I've spent the most money. And this is like the most expensive bit of my setup. And it's probably a bit extra. You probably don't need to. But I have the Sony ZV-1, which is like a vlogging camera they've designed it as. So it is a camera that you don't just use as a webcam. You know, you can take it out of you. It's a normal camera. You can record video on it and stuff like that. The view find a bit like you can flip it out, the sort of monitoring panel, and turn it around so you can hold the camera up to yourself. But there's some features of this camera that I think are really, really amazing. Obviously, it looks quite good. I think it looks quite good. Hopefully, you agree. I'm just outputting the signal at 1080p60, and that seems absolutely fine. One of the nice things about this camera is that you can just connect it using a power cable, and it will keep charged up. It doesn't always work perfectly. Like, if I've left it on for a very long time, and the battery's completely died because the thing charging it has been switched off, like the power's been switched off at the wall, then sometimes it'll mess around for a few days until the battery's, like, properly charged charged up again that's a bit of a problem but other than that i haven't had any trouble with overheating or anything which i know has been a problem with a lot of cameras or there's lots of cameras where you have to buy like a special battery to be able to be running it on power all the time so this has been really really good for that it's pretty small it's super convenient to like carry about or anything like that if you want to take it anywhere although to be honest i kind of just have it set up i thought i was going to be doing loads of theme park vlogging and that just never really happened i'm really happy with this camera i connect it using a cam link so i just have a mini hdmi coming out the side of the camera that runs into an Elgato cam link which then runs into my streaming PC and again it just comes up as a video capture device it just appears like a webcam. The Sony ZV-1 does actually have a feature where you can just connect it via USB to your computer 
and it will send a signal but in my experience the resolution and frame rate were really really bad with that like it didn't work very well at all so i would much rather use the cam link now like i said this is where i spent quite a lot of money on my setup so this camera costs about 600 pounds depending on where you get it from and obviously the sales on sometimes where you get extra stuff bundled with it and the cam link costs about 100 pounds so this is like 700 quid and i would argue it hasn't got, ever got me any more viewers or followers or anything i could have got pretty similar quality stuff especially for streaming from using my old webcam which is a logitech c920 which probably costs like i don't know like 30 quid or something um you can definitely get very very good results just using a webcam but if you want to make your content look a lot better and you like sort of messing around with all of the stuff that you can do with a camera that you can't really do with a webcam it's a really really good camera it's just kind of pricey at number three, we have something I don't think needs much of an introduction. We have the Stream Decks. Now, I actually use two different Stream Decks. I have a normal Stream Deck, and that costs 140 quid. And then I have a Stream Deck Mini, which was 70 pounds, so half the price. And it has less than half the buttons, I think. Yeah, slightly less than half the buttons. Now, Stream Decks, for anyone of you who don't know, this is something that Elgato makes, and it's basically a set of programmable buttons that each have a little screen in them so you can show what they are. And I use it for loads of stuff. So I have a button to start the stream, a button to start recording, a button to change different scenes a lot of the time i can get rid of certain things so i can like get rid of my webcam and stuff like that if i want to um i have buttons so i can like make noises appear and stuff sometimes i'll use it for counters like if i'm trying to get so many wins in call of duty i can press a button every time i get a win you can program it to do kind of whatever you want i could program it to control the lights to control the audio to send messages in chat there's so many different things you can program with this and it's super useful i have the one that controls obs is connected to my my stream pc and that has all of those different buttons for stuff like that um for changing scenes and stuff and then i use the mini i actually got that fairly recently to connect to my main gaming pc and then i can use that so i can press a button to start a recording or to take a screenshot um stuff like that basically or if i want to have like the frames per second counter or something like that i can put that up there i also have a button on there that lets me switch audio between speakers and headphones which is super useful for me because i switch between them all the time especially when i'm editing so they are super useful they're not massively exciting and i know there are ways you can do this on your phone but then you can't use your phone when you're streaming and you're gonna have to have it propped up somewhere there's lots of different ways you can get around this the stream decks are kind of expensive but people use them for a reason they're just super good they work really really well the software is really straightforward as well like there's so many different plugins and extra things you can do with them you can like find some really really interesting things people have done with like multi-action macros and stuff like that where they press one button and all kinds of crazy stuff happens on their stream so yeah i think these are definitely worthwhile i personally wouldn't bother with the excel because you can spend a lot more money to get a huge one but i don't think you really need that many buttons and it'll take up so much space on your desk you can actually just have different pages on your stream deck so you can press one button to just cycle through different pages so you can have as many different functions as you want on there so yeah stream decks super good really really encourage you to go get one if you want to be able to control things at number two we have something that i don't see many people talking about very much but i think it's super important and that is the camera and microphone mounts so these are things like the arm that you can kind of see here this is my microphone arm and I can move my microphone wherever I want. And I really like this because sometimes I want to kind of swing it out of the way when I'm not on stream, I'm not recording. Sometimes I want to move it because I'm kind of just adjusting where I'm sitting. It's super useful. If you have one of those things like you buy a USB mic, often you'll get like a little desk stand for it. They're kind of terrible because you're going to be really hunched over if you're actually speaking to the right place on the mic. And it means you haven't got much versatility. Also, every time you do anything on your desk, like typing or tapping on a desk or moving at all it's going to affect the microphone similarly my camera mount is something that i absolutely love this is something where i used to have the webcam um attached to a tripod which i just sat on the desk and as soon as i wobbled the desk slightly so like i was just literally playing a game or anything causes lots of little vibrations and stuff like that the camera would be shaking all the time then i got this mount where basically i just attach it to the windowsill that's behind my desk so it's not touching desk now if i shake my desk doesn't move the camera at all and that's super useful i don't know why i just shook this so you can see the microphone moving a little bit but yeah so that's super useful to me also that mount it has like an arm so i can reposition the camera i can do things really really simply um also another shout out to something that i haven't put on this list but a spirit level i always have a spirit level on my desk just because it's useful to like level out the camera and stuff like that and my monitors because i'm a bit funny about that and the camera mount also has like extra attachments on it so at the top i can put the key light and stuff because most of them use like the same fittings and stuff now i know 
though you can spend a lot of money on these so i know elgato has a really really fancy microphone arm that you can use that like will lock into lots of different positions much much better than this one will but you don't have to spend a huge amount of money i spent 18 pounds for this mic arm and you know it's super creaky and it's kind of loose in lots of ways and i'll probably have to replace it at some point but it does the job and then i spent 50 quid for the camera mount and that is a lot more solid um that does a little bit more i can like move it in lots of different ways but it's i personally think it's kind of worth it by the way i will put links in the description to all of these different things so like the amazon pages for all of them i'll put my affiliate links in so maybe i'll get some money if you buy any of them but if you want to check them out you can look at the description below most of these things are still for sale i think so at number one we have something that is new to me so i've only just got it yesterday but i've been so impressed with it already and i need to point out here that elgato did send me this for free they haven't like paid me to make a video or anything they didn't even ask me to make a video but i did want to say that because four people say like oh you're only saying that because you got it for free so this is the 4k60 pro which is a pci capture card from elgato now this thing costs 229 pounds but as i said elgato sent me one of these which was super nice of them and i'm very very thankful for that now the reason i've put this at the top is because if you're going to do two streaming two pc streaming or you're going to be streaming from a console or anything you need a capture card and this is the best one i've used it will record at 4k resolution i'll probably just use it for 1440p but it deals with that absolutely fine it will run at 60 frames a second and it has pass through for up to 240 frames a second which seems super good and it will deal with hdr and all of those things really well but one of the things that's super useful for me is that when you change resolutions when you're playing a pc game that changes resolution or some of that it doesn't seem to freak out it seems to be able to cope with that absolutely fine i installed it in my pc it took literally like five minutes to slot in the pci and just took the bracket out of the old pci slot put this in screwed in the bracket thing and it was good to go it just worked and now because i have more than one capture card at last i now have one that's dedicated to the console so it's in a position where i can just stream the consoles whenever i want to then when i want to switch to pc i don't have to unplug anything i've just got it already set up for the pc and like i said at the beginning of this video none of these things will necessarily get you more like views or followers or anything like that but if they make your life easier then a lot of the time they're worth it and this capture card this thing i can't show you because it's like inside the pc so i'll just keep waving the box around Around. this capture card seems like it's super super good at exactly what it does and it's gonna make my life easier so that's awesome so thank you very much for watching all this if you have any questions about any of this gear let me know in the comments below and i'll do my best to reply to you if you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you soon goodbye